Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the new Microtech Brachial, which is a collaboration between Bassinelli Knives and Microtech. This was sent to me by Eric. Thanks so much, Eric. This will go back to him when I'm done reviewing it. Thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is one of those knives that you're going to find periodically available. When they are available, they will probably go quickly. I will link this knife right down below so you can check it out. Any additional specs you want to see. I'll also link Microtech knives down below so you can see what else they've got going on. I would appreciate it if you use my links. It really does help the channel. Let's go ahead and uh, get a measurement on this guy. Overall length of the brachial coming in at eight inches. Overall at least, eh, yeah, it's eight inches. Blade length is coming in at, so the, the curvature always throws me off. You could measure it, yeah. It's under three and a half inches. We're gonna say 3.35 inches. And then your cutting edge is coming in also at about 3.35 inches. It's hard because the distance here and then the curvature is like, whatever. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, uh, if we get these things butt to butt, it is definitely like the, the knife feels big. It looks big, right? The curvature, the sort of presence of it. It's, it's kind of a loud, aggressive looking knife, but it, it's definitely bigger than the Rat 2. It's not quite as long as the Rat 1. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, close to the PM2, definitely larger than the Para 3. And then last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Benchmade bug out. Uh, there's some curvature, I'm sorry, camera angle here is making the brachial look a little bit bigger, but it's actually identical in length. It's about eight inches. It's the same thing as the Ritter Hope. Definitely bigger than the uh, bug out. Let's go ahead and talk about action real quick. Wow, 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 wow. Yeesh, this thing <laughs> kicks really hard. I've always talked about how the most powerful side opening automatic knife I've ever felt was the Microtech Stitch. This feels about the same. And what's crazy is, is that it's firing that hard with a blade that weighs substantially less than the blade on the Stitch. Um, this thing fires. If you pick this up, I just, just for people who are like, I'm gonna go buy it, my first automatic knife, and it's gonna be the Brachial. Gee, I can't wait. It's a cool knife. But for the love of God, hang on to it. Hang on to it. I can't tell you how many billies I have interacted with in real knife world. Like, oh yeah, I love my grandpappy had a switchblade. Here, hand it over here. I'll, whoops! I threw it all the way across the room. Hope that wasn't expensive. Seriously, <laughs> hang on to it. And if you pass it to a friend, tell them to hang on to it, right? <laughs> this thing kicks freaking hard and it is wicked satisfying. It makes a uh, a very <laughs> resounding thwack noise, right? Um, so uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but uh, seriously, this thing is wickedly powerful. It sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like a very, very um, dead, thick tree branch being snapped over your knee. That's, that's, uh, the best way that I can describe it. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's really not all that thick. It's a little thicker than the Para 3, but we do have some nice a little bit of contouring going on. So that's uh, that's always appreciated. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This knife is curved, so it's going to be kind of like carrying a tactical banana in your pocket. Uh, maximum height, I mean, you know, it's like we have to go from down here to up here, it's actually pretty tall, right? I mean, not in the dip of the curvature, but up here. So, you know, if you were to sort of draw a square around it, it that's, that's kind of the presence that it takes up in your pocket. It's gonna be fairly similar to the PM2, honestly. It's not quite as long, but it's, it's gonna be similar, right? Maybe a little bit less. So if you found 
you know, that the PM2 carries comfortably, then you'll be okay. If you found that it's kind of heavy, you might be a little cautious about this one. Or at least not, not heavy, but just like cumbersome, I guess. What are we looking at for materials here? We have M390 for the blade steel as per usual. Keep in mind, actually, you know, for new people who don't know, uh, Microtech will sometimes swap the steel out with 204P, which is Carpenter's version of M390, uh, and sometimes LMAX. So when you go to a website and you look and the picture shows M390, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's definitely what you're getting. If you wanna know for sure, I would call the retailer and say, hey, what steel is this batch, right? The 204P, M390, LMAX, honestly, they're all great. Uh, 204P and M390 are going to perform pretty much exactly the same. LMAX is going to be a bit tougher, but a bit less stainless. A uh, little less edge retention, um, but definitely easier to sharpen. So eh, you pick your poison, right? Or wait, and then pick your poison when the time comes. Aluminum and M390 on this guy. We definitely don't want grams. We want ounces. Weight coming in at 4.48 ounces. Uh, ratios are not perfect, but it's really not all that heavy. Uh, it's pretty normal for a four, for a uh, eight inch knife. I mean, putting that up against the Ritter Hogue, um, yeah, the Ritter Hogue actually weighs more. Is that right? 4.59 versus 4.52. Yeah, okay. So I don't really have much of a problem with that, but do with that information what you will. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think the pivot is a T25. I think. Nope. It's going to, I'm sorry. It's going to be a T20. I couldn't remember. <laughs> are some Microtechs T25 or are they, are they T20? Maybe this is a slightly smaller fastener. So this is a T20. Hallelujah. That's excellent. I think all, I kind of feel like all pivots should be <laughs> T20 and, and higher, right? Um, this is a nice, deep pivot. And it's huge, just e so easy to adjust. And then the rest of these look like they are probably T8. And uh, just because I got that first one wrong, let's go ahead and check these. So we have T8. I'm not going to stick that in there. Uh, the rest of these are going to be T8. Even the pocket clip screws are going to be T8. So that is wonderful. Now, uh, taking apart an automatic knife, like you can get in here. It's going to be convenient to get into it. But once it's open, anybody who has disassembled and tried to reassemble an automatic knife, the very first time you did it, I don't care what you say, you didn't have an easy time. Maybe the 10th or 20th time you did it, maybe it started to get easy. But the first time you do it, it's not going to be fun. It's a big, thick coil spring in here, holding it together and keeping it down and then putting the blade back in there. And You are essentially trying to hold down a disassembled or partially disassembled spring-loaded blade while you frantically screw things back together. It's not fun. Uh, it can be done, but it's not fun. So I would not recommend taking this apart. If there's something wrong with it, contact Microtech and send it back. But if you absolutely have to, and for whatever reason your warranty's voided, uh, voided anyway, well, at least you can get into it. So I appreciate that. There is quite a bit of hardware though. Three screws on each side. Just make sure you have a, uh, you know, a nice safe place for your, for your uh, fasteners there. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. I don't think this knife is nearly as aggressive as some of Microtech's other big bad autos. Um, we are coming in at, it's still pretty thick, 155 thousandths. Now the Stitch and the um, SOCOM Elite, uh, to name a couple of big bad autos, are 185 to 190 thousandths. So it's definitely thinner, but it's still on the thick side. Fortunately, the grind is pretty good for slicing. We'll talk more about that. Um, is there anything else that I need to talk about? We didn't really look at the inside. I mean, it's aluminum. You can get my flashlight in the same tool area. Yeah, they actually did mill the aluminum. Look at there. Huh. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, a lot of people ask me right off the bat, does this operate the same, like in, internally, is it the same as the Microtech Stitch? To my knowledge, yes. And that means there are no washers. It's just running on a... Uh, flat, uh, polished surface. Now, if you look around online, it's doubtful you'll find anyone that's ever had an issue with this. My Microtech Stitch operates flawlessly. The action has just gotten better. The lockup is completely and totally solid. So 
This model, for whatever reason, the way that they do it on the inside, it just doesn't need the washers. Uh, and that kind of baffles me because you would think that it would need that or that it would somehow harm the aluminum or, I'm sorry, what a, the, the surface on the inside. Apparently not. I can't find, I dug for a little bit, I can't find a single situation where some failure was caused by the lack of traditional washers in these things. I can't find anything. So considering how many um, you know, stitches there are out there. And I don't, honestly, I don't know if the automatic SOCOM operates the same way because I don't own one. I've never handled one. Um, but considering how many are out there, I would think if it was a problem, we would have heard something by now. So, um, I have no in-depth te testing to prove this, but for those wondering, yes, it's the same thing. It sounds like you should be okay. Let's go ahead and talk about this knife. So we have this, you know, pretty aggressively curved sort of Persian style uh, bladed automatic knife. And, um, you know, I I, um, I can't say that it's my favorite aesthetic, but uh, in hand, <laughs> it actually feels pretty nice. This little area right here that looks like it's going to be real sharp. No, it's really not. And it's a nice lock in. Um, otherwise, you would have this area that's just curved right here, which is kind of, eh. but it, I can feel that, and it it feels pretty good. I mean, if you want to choke back a little bit like this, I don't know why you would, but you can. I mean, this is pretty open. You can move around if you want to kind of adjust and get over the top of it, right? It's not going to really aggressively attack your fingers, and, and I, I feel a little bit more secure there. I'm kind of thankful that it's there. I'm also really happy uh, about this, uh, you know, this wide jimping zone here that extends up into the blade and there's a little bit of jimping there. It just feels good. Ergonomically everywhere except for the pocket clip because they insist on these, you know, like these bill sort of, it goes way, way up high into the air and then it's flat on top. And then it, it's not the worst clip in the world. It's just kind of annoying. Microtech clips have always just been a little bit annoying. And, and most people who own Microtech knives They'll even tell you, you know, I mean, you get a few people going, no, I, it's fine with me and that's fine, but you're going to hear it from a lot of Microtech people. People Like, I, I love my Microtechs, but the clips are freaking ridiculous, you know? So it's an okay clip. It's not really that bad. I'd give it maybe a C plus. Uh, it's, it's okay, but that's the only thing that I'm feeling here. Otherwise, it's pretty good. The, uh, the texturing, I love, like all the, this is, you know, a lot of people say, why are Microtech knives so much more expensive than blah, blah? Um, so if we're going to compare to ProTech here, and I love ProTech knives, but part of the reason you're going to pay more is because it's pretty undeniable. If you look at Microtech knives and you look at ProTech knives, the amount of detail that's coming through on a Microtech is quite a bit more. It's going to take a lot more work to do things like, you know, shape this button the way that it is and then knurl it. And then we've got these areas right here, these raised areas. And then we have this area right here that's milled out. And then there's a frag pattern on the inside, right? There's a lot more work that went into these two chunks of aluminum than what we see on ProTech, right? Now, if this isn't your style of aesthetic, right, and you like a more plain look, then hey, great, you can save a bunch of money and go with a ProTech. Still like, I'm not saying like one is better than the other. I'm saying, you know, this is factually part of the reason why you're going to pay more for a Microtech. There's simply more work that goes into these things. We're still going to talk about that price tag, believe it. But yeah, does this count? Is this something that, you know, counts? Well, yeah, it just does. It, it's not my opinion that it costs more money to do something like this. It does. It costs more money to do this, right? How much? Eh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, the blade shape, Persian style. Uh, there's another word for this. Persian style clip point, Persian whatever. Uh, we have that sweeping sort of trailing... Uh, blade shape, and we've got a nice amount of belly. So your slicing tasks, yeah, this is going to handle it. Um, the, uh, the edge down here is not a laser beam, but honestly, it's for a Microtech, <laughs> it's pretty impressively thin. Uh, also, the flat up here, take a look, flat carries out to, I don't know, maybe 40% 40, 40 the length of the blade. And then, you know, it's a pretty it's not an aggressive drop, but it does, it's, it's quite a bit, right? There's nothing in the cutting path. It's going to be a workhorse. The tip, eh, it stays reasonably thick, but there's also just a small triangle of material out here. Um, and this is M390, which is not a steel known for toughness. So what I'm saying is, you know, 
don't use your knife as a screwdriver. Don't use it as a pry bar. That's not what it is, right? And this, a blade shape like this, is going to be especially susceptible to, you know, fracturing under that type of abuse, which that's what it is. It's abuse. Cut or puncture, things that can be punctured, right? Like, well, my day-to-day -day requirements are puncturing cinder blocks, so... Uh, is this going to work for me? No, it's not going to. Why? What type of occupation is that? Um, you need to, uh, yeah, you need to use the appropriate tools. So um, make sure that you are cutting or puncturing things that are appropriate for a knife, and you should not have an issue. As per usual, Microtech insists on this ridiculous paragraph. Brachial A, serial number 176, big circle around Microtech, 2 dash, uh, February of 2022, USA, M390. Right, and then we've got the designer information over here. Man, like, I, why do we have to have out, like, I could understand if it just said Microtech, right? And then M390, that's fine. But we gotta have all this stuff all over the place. Sorry, I bumped the camera. It's fine, it's not hurting anything um, in, 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 the in, in the sense of like, when you're using the knife, it's not like material's gonna go, oh, I, oh we're getting hung up over the Microtech logo. No, it, it's fine. You're, you know, it's just kind of like an eyesore, you know? So these uh, likely will come in a variety of different finishes. The only one I've seen so far is the stone wash, where they have apocalyptic, and then they, you know, they do the bronze, and they do the apocalyptic bronze, and then they do the, uh, the DLC and they do the kind of two-tone thing. I imagine that Microtech will apply their usual, you know, et cetera to this. But yeah, uh, they're probably going to be kind of hard to find in exactly the right configuration. Uh, moving down here, we do have a little lanyard bar area thing, which is great. Um, I like this much more than a hole, right? Can you, if you can imagine that they put a hole here, they don't usually put it up. They don't, I'm sorry. They don't usually put it back here. Like they do on hinder knives, where if, if they're insisting it being part of the face of this, of either of the scales or both of the scales, this is where they should put it is back here, but they always insist companies always insist on putting it up here. And then the pocket clip has to be repositioned to some stupid place. To make room for it. This solves that problem. This is great. Lanyard people can enjoy whatever lanyard position they want and then the pocket clip is free to be where it needs to be. Unfortunately, we have this double sort of, these are annoying, getting in and out of your pocket. Yeah, the retention's there, right? So for those of you who find yourselves hanging upside down on a day-to-day -day basis, the thing's not going to fall out of your pocket. I realize that some of you actually do hang upside down for your job, right? And this is helpful. But just, you know, remember, you represent <clears throat> like 0.0001% of the population, most people, you're just going to be walking around, right? You're not going to be doing cartwheels. You're not going to be doing jujitsu with this thing in your pocket. You're not going to be doing parkour. So yeah, tactical pocket clip, functional and capable and helpful for very few people. For everybody else, it's just kind of obnoxious getting in and out of the pocket, right? But it is what it is. Um, it carries... I'm not going to call it shallow, but this is what's going to be hanging out of your pocket, right? At the top of this banana. And then this bill likely will rise and, and you know, scoot over, you know, even, even some of the thicker pocket seams. The problem is that they just insisted on making the end flat. Just to, just to, just a little bit like, I got to use my other hand, right? <laughs> Listen to this guy complaining. He's so mad about the clip because he has to use two hands to get it in and out of his pocket. Isn't this supposed to be like tactical and speedy and, you know, wait till you see how fast my knife is. Let me get it out of my pocket. Oh, get it. There's so, so the pocket clip has this other little divot. I just got to pull it over that real quick. There we go. Okay. So, all right. Now, are you ready? Bam. Look at that deployment speed. <laughs> that drives me nuts. Just freaking in and out. This takes me like one second. Just. That's the sound of a knife coming out of your pocket, I guess, right? But this just, uh, this drives me nuts. Um, it's fine, though. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a deal breaker for anybody. But it's just, like, <laughs> it's just annoying, right? Um, and then we have Microtech again on the pocket clip in case you missed it on the blade. <laughs> a little bit of uh, additional frag texturing out here, which, by the way, this does, this is hand, like, it does feel good. Your fingers land right on it. And there is absolutely, that's functional texturing that will help whether you are barehanded or using gloves, right? 
Um, we have a huge, um, God, this thing is freaking powerful. Uh, we have a huge stop pin. Uh, I think maybe a little bit of shouldering. Yeah, there is. There's a little bit. It's kind of curved uh, out in there. Absolutely zero blade play. And this is how I always check that I know that this is going to be powerful enough, but I hold the button down to make sure. Even if I'm just just pulling the blade back just a little bit, it's always pushing itself out into the open position. So no matter where, no matter where it is, it's going to deploy. And that's something that's beneficial with a side opening knife. You don't want to be pushing the button and it goes, nah. You don't want that, right? It usually means the pivot's too tight or perhaps the thing just wasn't manufactured correctly, but that's how it should feel. Uh, and then also, <laughs> this has zero blade play. Don't think there's gonna be any hint of pivot lash, no. And then that snap down into the closed position. Ooh, here, listen to this. Oh yeah, that's nice. Uh, centering, dead on. That's exactly what I expect from these things. We didn't talk about the backspacer. That looks really good. I like this sort of, you know, gear pattern, uh, tactical backspacer. So this is um, this is a pretty useful day-to-day -day auto, right? The stitch is massive overkill, and so is the freaking SOCOM Elite. I know they're awesome knives, and I love them. I, I own a manual SOCOM Elite, and I carry it periodically. Uh, I own a stitch and I carry it periodically, but it just feels completely and totally insane. To be fair, this is still overkill, but it's way less overkill day to day. Fair enough, there are people out there who really would make use of every tactical aspect of this knife. And if that's you, congratulations. But the vast majority of people who pick these up, I always have to say this when I'm reviewing something in the caliber of Microtech world, right? Whatever this was designed for, whoever it was designed for, remember, you don't need a tactical pass to buy this knife. You don't have to show your black card, ninja status, level red dragon. You don't have to show that crap to buy this. You just have to be, oh, yeah, welcome to, uh, welcome to, uh, knife, knife store USA. Uh, uh, can, uh, can automatic knives be shipped to your state? Uh, yes, they can. All right, uh, just uh, pay the money and uh, you can have your, you can have your uh, Microtech. That's it. <laughs> you don't have to be a special tactical Black Ops Super Ninja Level Five Midnight Belt. You don't have to do. The, you, that's not a thing. You can be Fred from accounting on his couch. Like, oh, that looks cool. Oh, they're legal in my state. Okay, I'll buy that. That's it. And you know what? That's the vast majority of people who are going to buy these. They're gonna, they're gonna buy it, flip it. They're gonna watch content like mine. <laughs> right now, there's somebody with a different automatic knife. Maybe they, they're sitting there with their stitch <laughs> thinking about buying the brachial and you're just flipping it. And that's the most use it's seen all day is you flipping it while you're watching this video, right? That's the vast majority of people who are gonna pick this up, right? And then they're gonna carry it and then sometimes they're gonna get it out and open Amazon, Amazon packages with it, right? That's, that's the vast majority of people, right? So I'm completely and totally valid in saying like, hey, this is how it's going to operate. This is how it's going to, you know, feel for the vast majority of people. This is how it's going to convenience you and how it's going to inconvenience you, right? If you are, uh, you know, Black Tactical, you know, level 300 midnight Red Dragon Clan, then you can ignore all that because this is going to be the ultimate, right? This is going to be the, the super omega knife that just fits all of your needs. Um, okay, all of that aside, this is pretty good. I actually really like this and it makes a lot more sense day to day than like, you know, the LUDT is still Microtech's best day to day side opener, uh, best uh, like, like automatic knife, but this is an okay choice. Yeah, and the blade shape's good. It'll serve you well, right? I'm not saying that everybody's gonna need it, but this is pretty good. If you like how it looks, you're gonna be happy with this. What's the price on it? Um, well, it's about the same as a stitch, 400 bucks, right? Um, now, I'm not uh, one of those people who thinks that just for no reason and without knowing anything about anything, uh, thinks that it should just be, too, you know, the price should be cut in half. No. I do think this is a bit high. I think this feels more, you know, judging by where the U.S. competition is uh, in this category, this feels more like 350 bucks, 300 and 
you know, 70 bucks at, at most. It's a little bit higher, but everything's a little bit higher right now. It's not enough for me to get offended over, right? This is a high quality US knife. Uh, I like it. I'm not gonna say everybody needs to rush out and buy it. It's definitely not a knife for everybody, but for those of you who like how this looks, right? If you've, you know, got the budget for it, you'll like this. It's a cool knife. Uh, yeah, I liked it a lot more than I expected to. I think that's gonna be pretty much it today. Um, thanks so much to Eric for sending this in for me to take a look at. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.